Hey there, guys. So today we're going to be trying out the new um, model from Anthropic, which is the Claude Sonnet 3.5. And one thing I want to do very much with its coding abilities to see how it can create a RAG pipeline from a diagram. So I have this diagram that I created a few months ago, and this is just a, a visualization of a RAG pipeline where you have the data loading process, then you have the ingestion, embedding, and in ingestion into a vector database. Then you have the retrieval and augmenting the user query with the retrieve document and passing that into a large language model to give you better responses from models such as GPT, if include itself, and other large language model. So what I'm going to do is we're going to take this diagram and we're going to pass it into Claude Sonnet 3.5. And we're going to see if it can create a RAG pipeline, give us the code in Python, and then we're going to run the code and see how well it's done. So here is the image. Um, I'm just going to upload it. And I'm going to pass in a prompt that will basically tell it what I want it to do. Let me zoom in over here. And let me move myself up here. So I'm saying, give me the Python code for implementing a RAG pipeline using MongoDB as the operational and vector um, database. I didn't even say database. Spell it. Our operational and vector database and using the chain library and OpenAI APIs. So that is a poorly worded instruction but let's see how well it does. So let's zoom out here and let's go. So one thing um, 3.5 does is it uses artifacts. So this is, I guess, um, an unprofit uh, take on the UI for interacting with language models. So let's see. It's This is one, very quick, two, it's given us the code, which is amazing. So let's see if this works. We're going to see if this works. We're just going to copy it. And here is a copy button down here. Copy it and put it into a notebook and see if it works. So here is the notebook and we've just pasted the code. One more thing. There's probably going to be a pip install that we need to. It's told us um, where it is. We need to install the required packages, Langchain, OpenAI, and Pi Mongo. So let's do a pip install here. So pip install. It should have given us the pip install um command. Pip install uh let's go quiet. Lang chain. And we need to install open AI. Uh yeah, Pi Mongo and open AI. Right? And that's what it's told us to do. So let's do what it told us to do and we'll take it from there. So we will install this. Nice. Um then we can look through the code and this code looks relatively, um, it looks correct because we've imported all the modules we need, which is good. Um, we have the open AI key. Okay. We have all the Mongo URI, Mongo um, requirements, and we're using PyMongo to connect to a Mongo client. Nice. And we're going to be using a text file. Interesting. This is the directory loader and convert the content of that into documents. Um, and we're loading that into documents and we're chunking, uh, and we're using a chunk size of one files and overlap of 200. Okay. And then we're creating a, a object of our vector store and using that as a retriever and then initializing our, our LLM and we create a, a chain that has our LLM specify the chain type, the retriever and return the source document from the query. And then we process the user result. So let's see if this works. So we've got all our installation cool. Um, and let's see what we have to change here. So we probably have to change the API key. So I want to do one thing, which is I have my API keys stored on the Google Colab secrets and I can access it using this. User data. Module. So we're going to set our OpenAI key here. So let's change that to um, say user data 
dot let's say user data dot yes uh, i think it was the open ai yeah cool so user data get and that will give us our api key in our environment uh if you're following this tutorial you can set it in in your local machine as well um so we need our mongodb connection so we need our uri uri string so you can get this when you create a free account on mongodb um i'll put some instruction in the notebook when i upload this but we need a mongodb uri and i'm just gonna use the same process here um i think i called it mongo uri so we're using MongoDB as both the vector database and the operational database. So we can store our vector embeddings. We can store the meta metadata. We can also store the operational data as well. Um, so you don't need a, a separate vector database. Uh, let's call this uh, Amphrophic. Okay, let's go. Uh, collection name. Um, let's call it read that. I'm going to upload a blog from Anthropic as a PDF and we will load that in. So we have the client, which is fine. Um, uh, we get the client from the URI. Then we have the, we get the database. I've not created this database, but if MongoDB doesn't see a database, it will create one automatically. And we have a collection and the collection will be called read that. Cool. So now we have a loader and one thing we want to do, I want to change this. I don't want to use a directory loader. So this PDF is actually just something from Anthropic where they they looked into, I guess, they call it mapping the mind of a large language model. I've not read it, um, but maybe I'll read it later. It seems interesting. But I just picked up one of the latest uh, document converted to PDF and we can use that within our demo. So we have that in there. Let's change the name of this. We don't have to change anything. It's just going to be a PDF. We'll see how well this works. So we're going to chunk it. We're going to do the open air embedding. I think we're almost there. We are almost there. Um, so let me change this to a PDF loader instead. That should be fine. And then we can actually pass in the PDF directly, which is located over uh, what's the name? Let's rename it to uh, this re mapping, uh, right? And we'll call it mapping LLMs, which is cool. Uh, we can cause uh, if we call this mapping LLM uh, dot PDF, um, and then we can yeah, then we can use the loader in here and load it. But one thing we have to do is actually bring in this loader, and we'll bring it in from the document loader which should be over here so we're not using this anymore we're just going to use the loader from here we use the pdf loader cool so all right i think we're back on track so let's see how far we got so in previous iteration we got to this line 925 we've made a, a little bit of a change but um let's see if we get further down no we're still stuck on this line let's see so the error is, uh, yeah, we're missing this PDF. Makes sense. We're missing the Pi PDF library. And we can insert that again. We can install that again. So we're still stuck on this line 25. Let's keep going. We've not changed too much of the code. So will we just keep going? Are we going to make it? No, we're stuck again. Why are we stuck here? Mapping LLMs, not a valid file or URL. My bad, mistake. This is still living within the folder. Let's take it out of the folder. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Let's try that again. Are we going to make it past line 25? Yes, we did. And we're stuck here in this line 33. Let's see what the error is. Could not import tick token. Okay. Um, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to import the Langchain um OpenAI library. So let's actually change this. That should be good. 
Okay, open AI library. So this is just used the uh, launch. This is just use the uh, Open AI integration within Langchain, um, and that should bring in all the library need. Do minimal changes. So we've so far we've had, we've had to install this new library and this three new libraries essentially. Let's see. Do we get a error or a success? Okay. It's wow. What? Okay. So the capital of France is Paris, sources, no sources. So there seems to be an issue. I know what the issue is, um, but let me just say, um, one thing we need to check is if the data has been inserted into our MongoDB database. So remember the collection name is Anthropic Demo and the database name is Anthropic Demo. The collection name is Research. So we'll go into the database. Um, here is my... Um, MongoDB database. Uh, let's do a quick refresh of everything. Yes. So Anthropic Demo is right here. Excellent. So the code that Claude gave us actually created, used the right modules to create the database. And we have the collection, which is excellent. And we can see what's inside. Nice. Nice. So we have the text, uh, the chunk of the text, and we have the embedding. It's used... Um, the default OpenAI embedding that you get from the Langchain library. Um, I believe it's probably Adar or O2. Um, we have the source. Uh, we have the page number as well. Okay, this is good. So we have metadata alongside the embedding. So the data ingestion into a MongoDB uh, database has worked. The embedding of the trunk has worked. Um, I know what's wrong here and why it might not be using the source to get the, the why we might not have any sourcing is because we've not created our vector search index so if you're following this tutorial the way you create a vector search index to allow you to do our uh, conduct a vector search it, you click on search index here I'll, I'll walk you through this i'm gonna move myself up here nice um it's like a motion oh uh, so we go into the JSON editor and we click next. We call it vector index, which is fine. Remember to uh, go into the exact collection you want. And we would just create a vector search index definition. So the path is going to be embedding. This is the path of where our embedding. This is the part of where our um, vector embeddings for each chunk is located. Dimension is 1536. We saw that earlier on. And the uh, similarity function we're going to use is cosine. And uh, this should be good. Let's create that. Create search index. Excellent. So now that's been created, uh, it, it will do it relatively quickly. So one thing we're doing is, and you all need to go through the step, is create your vector search index. On MongoDB, as I've shown you, very straightforward. I'll put the link to the instructions on the notebook I share um, with this for this video. So we can go back. This is probably going to be done soon. And so far, we have the we have the research we have the research collection. We made a we made a connection to our, our Mongo cluster, and we ingest. We loaded up the PDF, converted it into documents, and chunked parts of the documents and embedded the chunks and passed it into a MongoDB um, vector database. And one thing we have to do right here is change it to um, vector index because that was the name of our index, our vector search index. And we're using GPT-3, uh, GPT-3.5 Turbo. We're doing a simple similarity search and we're returning five documents from the retriever that we've created from our vector store. And we create a chain with them. We specify the chain type and we have the retriever and we're returning our source document, which is fine. And we're handling, we have a function to process user query where we pass in the user query into the, into the chain and we get the result. Next, next thing we have to do is let's change this because this, this is irrelevant. Um, what is the capital of France? But let's change this to something within the document. So what is the 
document. Let's see. What's the document? Um, okay. So let's go and run this again and let's see what we get. Anticipation. Oh, yes. So it says the document is about a significant advance in understanding the inner workings of AI models, specifically focusing on the interpretation of features inside a large language model. Claude Sonnet 3.5 gave us the code to create a RAG pipeline from a, a diagram that I provided it right here. So we provided it a diagram. It gave us the code, it gave us instruction, which is fine. Um, told us we have to install uh, this package in and gave us instructions that we also had to get our connection URI and our open AI key. And it gave us the code. And if you see the initial code, we've not changed much. We changed how we're getting our keys, fine. We changed the strings here, fine, we're meant to. And I changed this part of the, the exact PDF we're loading. But after this, I didn't really change much. Uh, we changed the, the index name, which is also fine. And this is impressive. And profit, um, take my money. This is impressive. And it works. It works. We have the source that it's used. Um, it used the PDF. And it used the the exact uh it's shown the exact um uh extraction it's used to on to to conduct an answer. Um that's impressive. I'll put this code um on the Gen AI showcase repository. Um but let's touch on a few things, right? Let's just see what um Amphrophic is doing here with um the Claude 3.5 Sonnet. So this was a blog they released um, yesterday, 21st June, today the 22nd of June. So here we see that they've launched Claude 3.5 Sonnet. And this is the first release in the forthcoming Claude 3.5 model family. So there's going to be more releases coming out from Anthropic uh, this year. And it's raised the bar for intelligence. Um, and it's outperformed in a variety of uh, evaluation. We'll look at We'll look at it further down, but Claude 3.5 Sonnet, cheaper and faster, which is good. It has 200K token context window, which is interesting because they're not doing the whole 1 million context window um, that we see with other model providers doing. And we see if we look at the previous benchmarks that they have and against the, the intelligence against the cost, we can see that Sonnet is a significant, Sonnet 3.5, is a significant increase in intelligence and we're uh, placed at relatively the same cost. And I guess Opus is probably going to be somewhere up here if we're following this trajectory. But one thing is, I think they might release another, um, another model um, because I think Opus is good and I think as they're moving more into agentic systems, they might release uh, another model that is better at two call and um and other and other functionalities so they might call it let's say let's because haiku is like a japanese short poem a sonnet is a poem that is about 14 lines or so and opus is like a collection of of composition so the next one to signify like the the scale could be called claude 3.5 symphony or claude 4 symphony you know you know, well, symphony like a like an orchestra. You have multiple instruments and playing, and that could represent multiple agents or multiple applications within this single system. So, symphony guys, use that for your next model name. But going back, we can see that Claude three point five is smarter, and they've evaluated it on a, on a bunch of um benchmarks and evaluation benchmarks used to see the reasoning capabilities of um language models and we can if we just go straight into this chart increase the screen it's quite impressive that it's performed uh quite well in relation to other um models that are currently top in the field right now and across all these benchmarks it's 
done really well. Uh, this is impressive results. Um, if we scroll up and they've noted we can use clause 3.5 for tasks such as customer support and multi-step workflows. So very interesting and it's able to write and edit and execute code with sophisticated reasoning and troubleshooting capability. So within the um, agentic coding system, you can use Code 3.5 as your as your LLM for your coding agents. I might try this out um, in another tutorial. We will see. But moving on, uh, they have a video here explaining the vision capabilities of Sonnet 3.5. So it's a multimodal, um, multimodal model. Um, so it can process text and um, uh, images as well, which is pretty cool. And they have their own, uh, they have and their own, um, they have a vision um, evaluation benchmarks and they plotted it against the rest of the models within the space. But the interesting thing they had was the artifacts, which we saw over here. The artifacts are interesting. I can see that being, um, moving forward, being an interface where we can get connections to other applications within your, within your system. And you have the agent results um, over, I guess, the keeping humans in the loop within the agentic workflow. So, which is, we'll see how this develops, but this is interesting. And it's, remember, it's not really new because I think uh, with ChatGPT interface, you can, you can see it executing the code and the operation. But I'm impressed the fact that it can just take a diagram and just give us an almost ready, ready code for the RAG pipeline. So they're currently going to be working on enterprise version of, um, of, of Claude, um, which we can see that this whole artifact interface is to create a dynamic workspace, collaborative work environment. Okay. And entire, essentially they want organizations to use Claude to centralize their knowledge documents and, on, and ongoing work in a shared space and Claude serving as an on-demand teammate. Interesting. So they, they want to use Claude essentially to augment um, existing team members and Claude is going to be this agent that has um, access and awareness of all the documents within your, your, your machine or within your drive. And you can use it to perform actions, which is very interesting. As in, I've already built, uh, I showed how you can build, in a previous video, I showed how you can build an agent uh, that can access Google Docs. I guess they making Claude do something similar with documents and knowledges within your organization where you can basically just tell Claude to create a document or review a document or maybe even send an email to you or an email to someone within your team with a link to a document, you know, we can see that Anthropic is going to continue developing on Claude and the Claude model family. Um, they're going to be developing new modalities and features and focusing on business use cases for enterprise, um, and integrated with enterprise applications. So what this means is we are probably going to see Claude, um, be able to access applications such as Slack. Um, Zoom, uh, Google Docs, maybe uh, Word, Microsoft Word, and act as a agentic, I guess, co-pilot within within your whole system. And I guess through the artifacts, we can see the execution and interactions with all of the systems, which is impressive. Um, I've already shown done a video previously that shows how you can use an agent to access a Google Doc. But one thing is the team are exploring features like memory. And I've spoken about the importance of memory within um, agentic systems and how we improve agentic systems and why we need memory. So um, if you want to look at, if you want a high level overview of what memory looks like within agents, and when I say high level, I mean not high level, we'll talk some code as well. You can look at this video um, that I put, that I did last week, where you can see my hand movement but you can put these videos where i spoke about building ai agents with memory and i spoke about how mongodb within the agentic um system context is the memory provider um spoke about the different 
type of memories. And in this video, we implemented um, a long-term memory which can store conversation history and a vector database. And I also showed links to how you can create a semantic cache um, implementation with MongoDB. So AI agents needs all of this various form of memory. But more on that later in a future video. But thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I always keep forgetting to say that. But thank you for staying up all, all until the end. And thank you for watching.